Q2 FY23. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. M. Satish Chaudhary. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon to all of you. I am M. Satish Chaudhary, Company Secretary and Chief Investor Relations Officer of Divis Laboratories Limited. I welcome you all to the earnings call of the company for the quarter and half year ended September 30, <coughs> 2022. From Divis Lab, we have with us today Dr. Murli K. Divi, Managing Director, Ms. Neelma Prasad Divi, Full Time Director Commercial, Mr. L. Kishore Babu, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Kishore <coughs> General Manager, Finance and Accounts. During the day, our board has approved unaudited financial results for the quarter and half year ended September 30th, 2022. And we have released the same to the stock exchanges as well as updated the same in our website. Please note that this conference call is being recorded and a transcript of the same will be made available on the website of the company. Please also note that the audio of the conference call is the copyright material of Divis Laboratories Limited and cannot be copied, rebroadcasted or attributed in press or media without the specific and written consent of the company. Let me draw your attention to the fact that on this call, our discussion will include certain forward-looking statements which are predictions, projections or other estimates about future events. These estimates reflect management's current expectation of future performance of the company. <laughs> Please note that these estimates involve several risks and uncertainties and that, that could uh, cause our actual results to differ materially from what is expressed or implied. DV's Labs or its officials <laughs> does not undertake any obligation to publicly update any forward-looking statement whether as a result of future events or otherwise. Now I hand over the conference to Dr. Murli K. Divi, Managing Director for Opening Remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Satish, for introduction. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for our Q2 and half year financial year 23 results conference call. I hope that all of you, your families and friends, are in good health and keeping safe. We have gradually acquainted ourselves to adjusting to the new normal, and yet at BVs, we are vigilant about the continued existence of pandemic and are having the safety protocols in place. Now, I would like to give an operational overview. During the current quarter, we continue to witness normal operations across our manufacturing units. We continue to monitor and be aware of the extremely volatile global market scenario in terms of geopolitical uncertainties, confined mobility in China due to widening COVID spread, energy crisis in Europe and global inflation, and have set up various strategies to ensure uninterrupted supply despite the headwinds. <laughs> Adding on to the progress of our previous quarter's update, we have filed multiple DMFs for our Zambi KPI in several of the regulated markets. Our contrast media API have been filed in several countries and are in qualification stage at our customers. Two of the contract media APIs are being produced exclusively for the innovators where all qualification works are in process. Our custom census business has seen very positive progress where we believe a few of our customers and CEs 
will cross their trade and closer to launch in the coming times. Divis continue to manage our operations responsibly and create a positive impact around the communities we operate. We have undertaken several CSR and sustainability initiatives during the quarter. Some of the CSR initiatives include developing the infrastructure of the communities around our manufacturing units, benefiting nearly 75,000 people. <coughs> As a part of child empowerment initiative, we continue to provide child nourishment and stationary supplies in government schools benefiting approximately 24,000 students. With that, I would like to hand it over to Mrs. Neelima to share some operational and financial highlights of the quarter. Dear ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all of you, and thank you for very much for joining us today to discuss the results for the second quarter FI23. I hope that each one of you, along with your friends and family, are in good health. On operational front, during the quarter, we had minimal to no disruptions to customer shipments and are operating with a commitment to fulfill all our customer requirements in time. The global logistics scenario has improved and we have witnessed receiving sea and air freight costs during the quarter. However, minor disruptions stemming from issues like manpower shortages continue and we are being cautious about the inbound and outbound logistics management to keep our operations smooth and meet our customer commitments. Raw material procurement and availability issues have slightly stabilized and prices for some raw materials marginally reduced compared to previous quarter, while for a few continues to increase. Prices of some base metals, such as lithium and iodine, have multiplied several times since last year, and we anticipate this trend to persist. Some solvents like toluene continue to increase. <laughs> Energy costs continue to rise, and we are taking steps to mitigate the impact of the same on our operations. Our critical supplier base is growing, and we have enough inventories to meet these difficulties. Our team is also carefully monitoring everyday developments across the globe considering the geopolitical tensions, China's zero COVID policy, and escalating energy prices to prevent any delays in customer shipments and ensure a stable supply chain. We continue to geographically diversify our supplier base to mitigate geopolitical risks. Moving on, I shall now take you through the key financial parameters of the quarter Q2 FY23. We have achieved a consolidated total revenue of 1,935 crores for the quarter as against a revenue of 2,007 crores for the corresponding previous quarter. PBT for the quarter amounted to 615 crores and PAT of rupees 494 crores. For the half year period, we have consolidated revenue of Rs. 4,278 crores and the profit after tax of Rs. 1,196 crores. Our EBITDA margin for the quarter accounted to 36% and 38.5% for half year. Exports for the quarter accounted to 87%. Export to US and Europe accounted for 68% of our revenue for the quarter and 71% for the half year period. Product mix for generics to custom synthesis is 57% and 43% respectively for the quarter and 52% to 48% for half year. We have a forex gain of rupees 31 crores for the quarter and a gain of rupees 87 crores for the half year. As we have lower sales during the quarter due to and due to the change in the product mix, our constant currency growth for the quarter has been negative at 13% for the quarter, while it has been negative at 2% for half year. Our nutraceutical business amounted to Rs. 163 crores for the quarter and 350 crores for half year. We have capitalized assets of 89 crores during the quarter and Rs. 200 crores for half year. Capital work in progress is about 542 crores as at the end of quarter. 
As of 30th September, we have cash on books of Rs. 3,336 crores, receivables of 1,840 crores, and inventories of 2,970 crores. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. We, we would request the moderator to open the lines for Q&A. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, and good afternoon to all. Uh, my question relates to uh, some outlook on the custom synthesis business. Uh, as I understand, uh, given that the share is lower and hence the gross margin is kind of little muted, if you could highlight that, uh, some outlook for the second half and next financial year, please. Uh, in, actually, in fact, our custom synthesis business looked very optimistic and probably much better than any given time. Um, there have been several opportunities we received in the last six months where we think and these opportunities are mainly in phase two, phase three, and hopefully in the near future, we'll see good results from those products. When you say the big opportunity we had on the fast track project, it completely depends on whether COVID on the rise or not. The volumes cannot be fixed on year on year, but are dynamic where demand would be very high are very low. Okay. And uh, would there be any, uh, uh, you know, qualitative guidance on the gross margin and EBITDA margin going forward, uh, given there has been some volatility? I think the margin, if you look at uh, material consumption, it remains the same 36% compared with the previous quarters. And yes, there were pressures on the raw material prices, and there were pressures on products mean generic price of API, increasing logistic costs. Yes, these have impacted, but we are slowly, energy costs went up very high to X to Forex. And we are trying to work on each uh, of these to see how to become less reliable on them, how to become less dependent on them. Okay, so in summary, can we assume that uh, this quarter margin is the new normal and then it starts picking up as and when the custom synthesis business picks up again? If you recall, if you recall in 1920, we used to have a run rate of total income of 1100 to 1400 crores with a per profit after tax of around 24-25%. And in, as we started, as we have state, uh, started taking up several of the expansion plans, it went up to 1,700 crores in the Q1, 20, and 21, with the slightly upper margins of 28 percent. And 21, 22, with the fast track project, 
it went to 1900 crores to the highest of 2500 crores to 46 crores yes with a better margin of 31 37% being the highest and i think in the immediate quarters one or two will be facing probably the same but going forward with these new opportunities in the phase 3 and with several opportunities from the big farmers what we got in multiple substance opportunities we should be able to see quite a big growth in the uh, it will only take about four to six quarters before they can yield it totally you know the qualifications the secondary site doing the formulation qualification then i think the commercial volumes will start perfect so thank you and all the best thank you a reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 the next question is from the line of cindrela karwala from jm financial please go ahead Thanks for taking my question. And so, I just want to understand if we look at the top line of one thousand eight hundred and fifty-four crores for this quarter, uh, how should we should we consider this as a base, and from here onwards it will grow, or is there any any kind of shipment delays uh, that have happened, or shipment deferrals which have happened for the next quarter on this? Any color on this, on especially on the generic side, that you can explain? I, first i think we have been always saying that we should not be looked at as on quarter on quarter basis it's very difficult either in the generic or in the custom synthesis to look at quarter on quarter basis so um, we have not left any opportunities and as as i mentioned that in the coming quarters few of the custom synthesis projects which are on um, i would say fast track they should be start doing well and also the fast track project which we had we do not know how the customer is uh, looking at it and uh, it all depends on the pandemic and the strategies right and so if we have to understand our new generic launches you were mentioning to a lot of dmf filings when should we expect these launches from a timeline perspective would second half be part of it or it will be largely from a fy24 perspective we should start looking at it the patent expiry of these new molecules where we submitted that much of time the expiry itself will start from 23 to 25 depending upon which one and so we will we should start looking at because the 24 onwards we should look at the opportunity <coughs> So, if if we are looking at the generic business uh, this quarter, almost around 870 crore level, uh, and it is showing some bit of uh, growth for us given the contribution uh, breakup that we have shared. So, how should we look at this portion uh, in the second half and over coming three to four years, from uh, including all these uh, uh, possibilities and uh, newer launches? you think that the volume should continue to grow or you still see some bit of uh, volume or a demand aspect uh, still stagnant at this point in time um post covid the other um regular therapeutic segment are growing and we see everything to be either normal or growing in the generic i'm going with the therapeutic segments when covid was uh, severe all the other therapeutic segments because of the hygiene and no masks and less communable so whereas now everything is open and there is again 
डिमांड फॉर एंटी इंफेक्टिव एंड एंटी आर्थराइटिक एंड एलर्जेटिक एंड पेन किलर सो आई थिंक वी सी ए पॉसिबिलिटी फॉर द इंप्रूवमेंट इन द जेनरिक इंडस्ट्री especially the cup and cold medicine um uh, which i think is getting uh, more in demand as the cold season has just started but this is a year on year quarter on quarter basis you know it goes down in summer and again fall and winter it goes up that is seasonal variation but i'm talking about before covid and after covid i think we are we are reaching a situation soon on therapeutic segments demand going up prior to covid whatever we had i think we will reach that thank you so much sir and all the very well thank you the next question is from the line of neha manpuria from bank of america please go ahead uh thank you for taking my question sir so on the comment that you made that you know uh, a couple of your customers who have a uh, products in phase 3 uh, we will start seeing contribution from those in 4 to 6 quarters so is it fair to assume that um you know the custom synthesis improvement will probably come through in you know cy24 fy25 probably and that, this is the base that of custom synthesis business we should work with till then as i said we have never seen so many opportunities in the custom synthesis both earlier we used to get them in the very early on phase 1 phase 2 mm-hmm. now we are also seeing not only we have many opportunities in phase 1 phase 2 we have we have couple of fast track phase 3 projects which we think will start building in 24 Okay. usually it is that's not the case usually usually you enter in a phase 1 phase 2 travel through 2 <coughs> 3 years then it will take one more year for launch then you see but during covid most of the companies concentrated on anti covid drugs hmm. everybody so now once this demand has gone down they started looking at the next immediate requirement and so they looked at their own pipeline and they found some good compounds who were worth launching billions of dollars was so they started pushing them this is where i think the the fast track project which we took <coughs> and executed in one year making under sub tons it's a benchmark in the industry nobody from a nc gram process had delivered validated delivered 100 sub tons in a year this is the first time in the history in the api industry so divis has put put that benchmark that it can be done in one year that's why i'm confident based on again this is all i think uh, to the best of our knowledge and also looking at um them finally getting clearance no the regulatory clearance or regulatory hurdles but we we are quite up to this at this moment understood so uh, and and it, from your comment it's fair to assume that post the fast track project that we executed last year we are seeing more inquiries for such phase 3 product you know pro- projects which are near phase 3 increasing uh you know so that pipeline is probably becoming much larger than it was pre covid as i said nothing like seeing the benchmark seeing the execution the world press is a very small community of 10 15 companies who did this project to x and who did that project to y naturally i think if somebody needs volume and quick execution i think we are looking they are looking at us as one of them who can execute and bring the product on to the table understood and, and sir an uh, update on uh, you know the kakidana capex uh, you know what have we seen there you know what have we has there been any progress you know 
It stands uh, same as of last time. There is not much movement from the uh, government, and we are still waiting for the clearance. Okay, so there's no there been no change in the uh, no state. Change. Okay, uh, and last one may one one more if I may squeeze in. What is the utilization uh, in the current quarter? Uh, around eighty eighty three percent. Okay, thank you, Samata. The next question is from the line of Sham Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for taking my question. Uh, just going back to custom synthesis and what's happened quarter on quarter, 1Q versus 2Q, just doing rough rounding up numbers, 1,200 crores has gone to about 800 crores. Uh, we, we, uh, we are aware, sir, that you had this fast-track project, COVID-related, uh, but does that explain all the... Uh, change quarter on quarter uh, for this uh, second quarter? I don't think we should be looked at as quarter on quarter. It's more, I think, in January, it can be looked at, if at all. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the custom countries, contract manufacturing, I think we should not be looking at it um, from quarter on quarter. I think sometimes. It can lump up based on the delivery, based on the uh, cold container uh, availability. I think more to do on the availability of the containers, refrigerated containers. Got it. So yes, you're saying maybe it's not a de demand issue. Is that, sorry, I'm trying to interpret your your point here, sir. So it could be because of delays and that's the earlier participant also is were there any delay because of unavailability of say cold containers that led to the yeah. lumpiness in the business no it is not the lumpiness on the business it is more of it's not i'm not having raw material it's not it is not having business it's mainly i think uh, some cold container availability uh, um, and probably more most of the projects are get some of the projects <coughs> probably are getting uh, cleared on the certificate of analysis. It took a little longer time for them. It has nothing to do with our regular business in the custom synthesis other than the past project. Sir, anything you can quantify there is how much of that could be booked in the upcoming quarters? Uh, any quantum? No, I, I'm not looking at exact crore number because that that QoQ is a big slip, right? And can't be just explained just by you know, fast track going to zero, which you have flagged already last quarter. So we are aware of that. But the, the uh, quantum is where there is some surprise. But if nobody asked me when the fast track, because of fast track project, it went to 2,500 crores. You know, nobody asked me why it went up. You know, is, is, is it only the fast track project or is it also some other uh, cut and census project. I think it's very difficult to explain on quarter on quarter basis. But I can tell you that 2023 and 2024 is going to be uh, a year where we'll have a lot of opportunities in cut and census happening. Got it, sir. That's helpful. Second question is on the uh, generic API and nutraceuticals. Uh, so generic API on a low base, I think we have grown. But if I do like a one or two year CGR, it seems to be still flat. So if you can talk about industry, either price, volume, dynamics. In the past, you have mentioned that we are not losing volume share, but we have seen pricing pressure. Uh, so if you can just uh, update us in what, I, what has happened in quarter two, sir. Thank you. Here, I think it has nothing to do with losing any business from our side. It is uh, the price pressures still uh, are there. You know, the two com big far big farmers who are our competitors. I think uh, for them, it's not very far from at least one of them going to be, what we hear is that they may be leaving. In such a case, probably we'll have a large chance shifting to our side as 
we have already expanded and we have plans to expand further okay sir thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of samir baisiwala from morgan stanley please go ahead i uh, thank you so much um and uh, so the first question is on the custom synthesis people have already asked them before but for the new projects <coughs> excuse me that for the new project um where you are expecting some fast track uh, you know in four to six quarters what would be the size of these opportunity i mean is it comparable to what we had done in the cope with the covid pro products or uh, is it going to be different we believe it's not for covid i think i did mention that because pre covid they were developed and i think um, they were the covid took over and only the covid drugs were promoted now i think these drugs are not of covid and um, how big is the dream i'm not dreaming the dreamer is the big pharma so we think they are quite big compounds okay you think it's a big compounds uh and so so, so these are not emergency use authorization type of products these are more of a regular nda approvals right i cannot comment on that the reason is that i think several of the if i say little bit you will be able to guess what they are then the big pharma will come after me mm -hmm. and i i don't think i will lose business but i will lose my faith at maintaining the confidentiality till now the credibility has been that we maintain the highest confidentiality we don't even talk about the the contract being existing we don't even talk about with which customer want no way sir and say so you cite for the generic api business the opportunities from patent expiration from 2023 to 2025 i i'm just a little curious because every year 15 to 20 billion dollar worth of drugs uh, lose patent protection and it's not going to be any too different for those 3 years so uh, so 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 you know so you should be having these as an ongoing opportunities rather than for those three specific years so if you can just uh, talk about that Uh, sir are you there uh, members of the management <coughs> we request all the participants to please stay connected while we reconnect the management and gentlemen the line for the management is reconnected uh, thank you and over to you sir okay uh, sir this is samir here i had asked a question on the uh, generic api do you want me to repeat the question can you please yeah sure so the question was that uh, every year we have 15 to 20 billion dollar worth of uh, patent expiration and that probably defines an api opportunity for companies such as yours so uh, you are highlighting those which are you know from 2023 to 2025 so anything that's uh, more specific for those years um, uh, your thoughts on that 
I think we have never disclosed. We said that 23 to 25, there is 20 billion dollar expiry um, of the patent, and we were developing process. We have completed that. We have filed a few drug master files, and we are in the process of filing the remaining. And uh, soon, the, some of the qualifications by the customers will be completed, and as the patents expire. Uh, they will be able to launch and we will be able to continue supplying the API. Okay, sure. So with your permission, I can, uh, let me ask just one final question. It's on the certain opportunity. So if you can just share what's the update over there. On the certain, so we became more stronger because we are backward integrated, and no other Satan manufacturer is backward integrated. We make our own uh, hydrocolloid venue nitrate, which is the starting material that's using a new technology by what's called photochemistry. People do not even understand photochemistry, but we produce 100 Satan a month using such technology where we have an advantage. And these raw materials are common to all satan. This is what puts us on the forefront of the satan. So we have we are already leaders in two satan. We have a custom synthesis project of satan, which we where qualification is complete. Another big pharma satan. Again, qualification is complete. Commercial quantity is already, uh, manufacturing is under progress. So, with the two of Sartan from the big farmers and one Sartan, two Sartan from our own, that leads to the two more Sartan in general that are with the decent volumes, which are where qualifications are under progress. I think that would complete the Circle of Satan. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tushar Manodane from Motila Loswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Tushar Manodane, your line is in talk now. Kindly go ahead with your question, please. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir, now we are. So again, uh, we are unable to hear you. If you can uh, change the mode of your uh, device. Is it better? Yes, sir. Just on the nutraceutical business, if you could share the capacity utilization. Um, we are about 80% uh, on the nutraceutical utilization right now. With whatever the capacity which we have doubled uh, over past one year, right? Yeah. Yes. So the sales run rate has been pretty stable at about 155, 160 crores. So anything we missing out here? It depends on uh, the combination of uh, uh, vitamin D, vitamin A, you know, our acid and beta carotene. The combinations of what campaigns we take up. I think that's one thing, and then the customer demand is another thing. Okay. And receivables also have been sharply down over the past six months. So in line with uh, reduced custom synthesis opportunity. What is it? I'm sorry? The receivables have also been down uh, over the past six months. Okay. Which is a good thing, receivables being down is a good thing because uh, I think the sales are lower, comparatively down than the earlier and we are, we are again back to what we were in the uh, 2021. Okay, sir. Thank you. That helps. <laughs> The next question is from the line of Surya from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. 
Hello? Yeah. Uh, hello? Uh, Surya, you may please proceed with yeah, your question. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for this opportunity. So, uh, uh, you have been indicating about the contest media as a kind of a key or uh, road driver for uh, in the near future. So, can you give some more clarity about uh, how many products are currently that is there in your portfolio is contest media? And uh, uh, you also mentioned recently that uh, for one product, you got a tie up with a big pharma. And uh, that could be the true growth driver in the near future. So, could you please provide some clarity about that and uh, how big is that contest media as a segment uh, for you to target? First, I think we need to understand what are our strengths to enter into contest media, to be competitive, and to sustain. Everything is adding. Contrast media is based on iodine. Iodine, what used to be $15 a kilogram, today is about $80 to $90 a kilogram. So most of the cost of uh, contrast media is iodine. This is where we developed technology to recover iodine, both organic and inorganic, from our waste streams and became very cost effective. This has attracted and given us more opportunities into the contrast media. And for two of the contrast <laughs> media, one with Big Pharma, another one, I don't know whether it, I should also call it Big Pharma, but they are the largest in the contrast media. Uh, we have completed uh, qualifications and are continuing the production. So we should see good growth, good sales. Okay, but uh, sir, uh, uh, is it possible to say that the contest media is an opportunity, whether it is in the kind of a, like uh, one to two billion dollar kind of a global market and we are trying to have a kind of a bigger pie of that or bigger picture about contest media if you can. I think the, there are two kinds of contrast media. One is for the CT, CT scans, yeah. which will check where are the blocks and what's happening in our uh, blood vessels. The second one is, which is used for MRI. We have not entered that before, now we are entering into the uh, contrast media of MRI. These are called gadolinium compounds. Gadolinium, gadolinium, these are all very specialized chemistry which uses gadolinium. Now, we have mastered the iodine based and it is not one billion, two billion, it's several billion dollars. And the contrast media, now no doctor wants to give you any treatment without a CT scan. Correct. Similarly, you go for neuropathic pain or you get any pain in the brain, headache, they want to immediately take an MRI. An MRI needs a gadolinium compound. So we understood this, we have developed some process for that, and now we are in discussion with the, <coughs> the leaders in the contrast media, so we should be able to soon uh, have, I think, sample approvals and then qualifications and all that. It will take more time, but it's not just the contract media, hiding base, but there are also another set of uh, media that's called gadolinium, which are for the MRI, which is probably budget much bigger market. Sure, sir. Uh, so, uh, second question is about the, let's say, the new units that we have created um, over last uh, two year period. So uh, as a kind of a part of our expansion uh, projects. So how many units have already been uh, currently under uh, um, the commercial manufacturing and how many would be, let's say, have not yet uh, seen 
commercial manufacturing as of now because of the regulatory clearance or something like that uh most of the units have already commenced uh two units one is small volume uh number of products at a time high potency compound that is under uh, completion and another one more block that is for commercial com where uh, that way you are seeing the final cross up uh, capital work in uh, progress uh, that is so other than these two blocks everything else is done okay and even the contrast media the block that is uh, that commission the operations sir it is when you say commission it is validated commercial commissioning commercial production started okay okay just last one question sir uh, uh, rather two point in this uh, one is that uh, as for your since there, there was a kind of a component of uh, this covid product in this quarter as well as in the corresponding previous quarter as for you what is the uh, like to like growth uh, uh, and uh, the second point is that uh, uh, have you seen any kind of a progress in terms of the new uh, contract addition or the project addition because of the kind of a uh, the disturbances what we are witnessing in the european world or let's say supply disruption coming from the even chinese segment definitely there is a global inflation at all time high confined mobility in china due to widespread of covid energy crisis in europe you know Yes. We, we just came back from CPHI, where several of our customers they are complaining at home. There is no either connection or there is a premium price for the gas or oil. They all have been lost for the for the coming winter. And what used to be like fifty dollars a month, now it is about five hundred dollars a month for the heating or cooling. so an increase in logistics is another thing i think this will play a lot in the coming uh, i think winter as well as following the winter <coughs> so is it fair to believe sir this way that uh, since europe is facing all these kind of a problems as you are indicating so possibly and the uh, majority of our export happens to europe and that could be one reason of uh, lower customs in this operation this quarter number one which i didn't want to say really but i think the indication that sourcing from china either generic or the big pharma for the custom center phase is going to be very difficult one they want to reduce their dependency where i think confined mobility in china and all of a sudden stopping and uh, i think zero <coughs> political which i don't want to bring it up i think these are causing a very big pharma to look outside either in europe us or india in europe and us there is not enough capacity to produce anything so india will have a lot of opportunities in the custom center phase irrespective of what the general conditions are in europe or usa and as the crisis and the few others people need medicine that cannot be ignored so we see the demand either it will be will stay as is or it will go up we don't see any coming down okay okay but no greater sign of a really significant additional business that you are finding in the custom sense i did mention that of some two fast track projects and opportunities phase 
and several uh, opportunities in the early stage. That's all custom synthesis. Then it is different. It's our own. Okay. Where we are working on the $20 billion project between 23 and 25. <laughs> okay. Sure, sure. And uh, if you just lastly, sir, uh, like to like basis, what growth that you would have seen in the quarter? This is my last question. Pardon? Like to like basis without this uh, COVID supplies, what growth that you would have seen, sir? We cannot we cannot discuss on quarter to quarter. I think it's very difficult for us to sure. discuss because you know the other generic or custom synthesis. Some are driven by the customers. Some are driven by <coughs> I think this cold of container availability. So it's very difficult to say. Okay. Okay. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Mehta from Capex Investment. Please go ahead. Deepak Mehta, your line is in talk mode. Kindly go ahead with your question, please. As there is no response from the current participant, we move to the next question from the line of Ritwik Shet from One of Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So I have two questions. Uh, by the end of FY23, we will be close to 5,000 crores of gross block. So uh, would it be fair to assume that uh, on current pricing, we would be around uh, our peak revenue rented would be around 2x uh, sales as we have been guiding uh, in uh, historically, around 2x uh, asset turnover ratio. Could you please repeat the question again? Yeah, so by the end of FI23, uh, our gross block would be around 5,000 crores. So <laughs> it is fair to assume that peak revenue run rate from the gross block would be approximately 10,000 crores? Well, at peak utilization? One is the dream, second is making the dream work. And the third is dream becoming true. I think uh, it, it, it's very difficult to comment on uh, whether this dream or true, uh, somewhere in between. Okay. Sure, sir. Uh, okay. And uh, so my second question is related to uh, Kakinada KPEX. Assuming that uh, we were to get clearance from the government, you know, what would be the timelines in terms of uh, starting the KPEX and then commissioning, uh, if you could throw some light on that? I think we have been waiting for six to nine months for the final, final clearance. Mm -hmm. And I have no say so on when they will clear, because we had all reg statutory regulatory clearances accepting the <laughs> clearance from the state government at the final pickup. Okay. No. So, so my question is not related to the approval. I'm saying that hypothetically, if you are if you are getting approval say tomorrow, you know, uh, we would start uh, constructing the facilities. So, when would uh, what would be the timelines to get it commissioned uh, from start till the end? Would it be one year, two year, uh, or uh, uh, period more than that? I think we should complete within one year and start seeing the results starting from the second year. Because again, once you complete, you have to again requalify whether it's our expansion of the existing products or new products. We have to validate, requalify, and customer has to again give clearance. I would say fair two to three years. Okay. Okay. Okay, so thank you and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, two, three questions. Uh, one is uh, one clarification. You made a statement that one of the competitors or, uh, or two 
players in one of the product would, would be going out one player would be going out was it to respect to nutraceuticals or with respect to the api business so uh, during the call you meant uh, you made a statement that uh, there are two competitors and one of the innovators would be going out so was it with respect to nutraceuticals or api business it is in the nutraceutical i didn't say the company will go out of business what i meant is that they may drop some of the products in our nutraceutical as there are there were severe price pressures it may not be of interest to them to continue because they always may have better products to produce in the european us context this is what i commented these companies are too big and they are too diversified and they have excellent profit making product so they don't have to hang on to some product in the nutra that uh, to continue so we here you know when you say here say we don't know what is the truth in it so we hear that it may not be of interest to them and some of these nutraceutical they may drop this what we heard so we are ready to take any of such opportunity okay okay thanks for the clarification and uh, now two uh, two questions sir like in uh, if we follow our last calls like 8 10 quarter calls we've been we've done a lot of work on backward integration and uh, improving the yields in our products and improving our cost structure uh, but still if i look at our margin profile uh this quarter and even adjusting for the one off products uh we are around that 33 34 adjusting for the other income so is it like the cost uh pressure in the pnl are so high that the benefits or the work we have done on backward integration are not completely reflecting in our pnl as of now because of the for, uh, backward integration we are able to maintain the profitability of what we were in the 2019-20 at bottom line 23 to 27% if we did not take up the backward integration had we been totally dependent on the supply for the raw materials to keep for the raw materials from china which increased prices anywhere from 20 to 40% it would have to trouble us <coughs> in even staying in business now the two things that happened because of backward integration one assurance of supply because in some of the provinces china just closed the walls borders no shipment of starting materials we would have been out of our jungle business two they just increase the prices 20 to 50% there is no way we can accommodate them so i think this is what benefit we got from the in spite of the energy cost increase in spite of other uh, cost increase we are able to maintain profitability the before the first start project also i would like to add here that since uh, we have uh, we have taken up the backward integration and also supplier geographical uh, diversification our dependency on china this half year has reduced by 20% compared to the previous year's uh, half year thank you before we take the next question a reminder to the participants please limit your questions to two per participant The next question is from the line of Mithun Ashwath from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, this is a little bit more broader question. Um, I wanted to understand what would your capex plans be for the next couple of years, since you are sensing large opportunities on the uh, generic side, uh, because we've seen quite a lot of capex in the last couple of years. Would your next couple of years, what kind of capex you would be looking at? uh number 2 is also on that portion you talked about uh, on the starting material side do you see the backward integration that you've done is coming to some sort of uh, 
leveling off or is there an opportunity to do a lot more there? Those are the two questions. The first question, I think, uh, we need to ex expand in the next two, three years, meet the requirement of some of the best uh, fast track projects we are entering now, because it depends on how fast the fast track project needs are. Is it few tens of tons or few hundreds of tons? <coughs> so, also the new contract media further. As I mentioned, two MRI, two MRI you compounds we are developing. Once we are successful in developing the chemistry and also qualifying our process, validating our process, then definitely we need capacity to produce them. <coughs> I think this is where uh, we see a big opportunity and we need to expand. Two, what's your second question? So I wanted to know in terms of what would the approximate capex that you'd be yeah. looking at over the next two years? No, your, your second question was on backward integration, what we did to be few compounds, is it adequate to stay in business or do some more? I think what we are doing is now coming up with new technologies in the backward integration, like the flow chemistry, vapor phase chemistry, liquid liquid, solid liquid, electrochemistry, and these will make sure that our dependency on embedded lithium and other metals and solvents will come down. Uh, we have introduced new swing technology whereby several of our swing raw materials solvents could be reused. These are all the things we are way ahead of other in other companies whereby we should be efficient and everybody is talking about energy conservation, green chemistry, carbon footprint, <laughs> less emissions, and we are ahead of them. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, we take that as the last question.